Hey, Alex, welcome to the show. As a way of getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Thank you very much, it's Brian. It's a great pleasure being with you today. So basically, my name is Alex Lopez, and um, originally I am from Barcelona, the best city in the world. Although I have to uh, to move to Madrid, where I live now, because of you know this IT is world. That is that near New York, or is it closer to San Francisco? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, actually, it's closer to New York, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so um, so basically, I just turned fifty a couple of weeks ago. I've got three kids, and 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 my passion is really mountain. It's, it's you know sales is just by accident because I need to pay the bills and stuff. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm a real climbing and mountain freak. You know. Oh, cool. That really motivates me. Now, now Spain, you you guys work there? I thought it was mostly just not so much. I mean, deli- well, delicious meals, dancing. <laughs> Well, we used to have bars open 24 by 7, but, you know, not anymore since the pandemic. But, well, you know, from that, you know, between siesta and siesta and fiesta, then we work a little bit, but uh, not yeah. so <laughs> yeah, And yeah. have you sold any other country other than Spain? Well, yes, actually, I mean, if, if you think about it, Spain, you know, according to the American companies, which have been working for more than 20 years, it's, it's a province of France, which it's a province of the UK, which is a province of the world. So for some reason, you know, Spain, it's also the bigger Iberia region. So I, I manage Portugal and, and Andorra, which is a tiny country between Spain and, and, and France also. Yeah. But and also, you know, yeah, I also manage uh, sales for Turkmenistan and Belarus when I was working for Alcatel. And also I had the opportunity to live in Germany, you know, so working uh, in Germany and also in Mexico City. So I've been doing a lot of stuff, actually. Yeah. And what got you into sales? That's an interesting, I mean, I'm here by sexuality. You know, the, the point is that I studied telecom and engineering in, in Barcelona. And when I finished school and uh, I was kicked out of the military service after eight days, eight days that's um, another very funny story. Another issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, out. And basically, I, I was doing an internship in a, in a company who was doing programming of, of uh, databases. Can you imagine something more boring? And, and I just threw a CV into um, an insurance company to, um, to do IT audits. Very funny, too. Uh, it is very interesting because the same day that I was about to start in the database company, the guys from HR in the insurance company called me, we want you, but for sales. I said, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not the kind, you know, you're not the kind of guys who wants to do auditing. You're going to be doing sales. And I just balanced it and I said, okay, anything but, you know, databases. And I started there. I mean... Jesus Christ, I started, you know, selling insurances, you know, which was very weird because I had this telecom degree, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and here we are. And when did you start to like it? Or was it just a natural evolution because of your personality and your desires? Or uh, I think so. You know, I, I like people and, you know, and talking to people and, uh, and, and building things and changing things. And, and, and you know, after a, uh, less than one year, I was managing like 27 branches in the insurance company. And, uh, you know, it, 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 was, it was good fun, but at some stage I realized that, you know, I, I had this telecom degree. What about doing sales, but in telecom? But I had to move to Madrid for that. So that's when I packed everything and just took my, my partner at the time and just, I just came here. And that's 20, more than 20 years ago. And what motivated you to get into leadership? Um, it was, again, by accident. I didn't want to, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is that I had this incredible year at, at Nortel. I was like the number one, you know, number one sales. I mean, I was awarded the Porsche Boxster, can you imagine? And and because I had like an individual contributor had like a, a quote of 4 million and I just did like 10.5 million. And I was said, you know, I mean, we have to increase your quote or something, but obviously, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. So you will have to manage people. <laughs> well, okay. So this is when I started. I mean, I, I like mentoring people. Um, what I don't like is that, especially nowadays, you know, with these bloody CRMs and Salesforce, managing now, it's it's like Salesforce control and micromanagement, which I don't really like, you know. To me, sales is, is about, you know, the people and changing and, and looking for the opportunities and stuff, not reporting, reporting, and reporting. Right. And have you been able to delegate that to like a sales ops or sales admin person? It's very difficult, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've been balancing. If you, if you look at my CV, you know, I've been balancing between individual contributor to to yeah. DM, RSD, whatever the title is, okay. But I've, but you know, when you are in this position, when you are, 
you know, the manager of something, the workload of, of reporting is just unavoidable. And yeah. it's just coming bigger and bigger. It is. And uh, pff, do you like it? <laughs> I mean, you have to do it. You have to do it. But, and but not, if, not if it takes, you know, more than 50% of your time, don't you think? It is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It, right. And it's becoming a standard in the industry. So It is. It's everywhere. You know, as, as soon as they get three reps, okay, then they got a, they got a dashboard. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the mentoring stuff. Well, mentoring or whatever you want to call it, you know. I mean, throughout my career, I've, I've trained, uh, you know, I don't know, many, many people. And some of them have been very successful, you know, country manager, or regional sales directors or whatever. And I love that part, you know, because as we were saying before, I don't know, at least in my country, of any specific training for IT sales. It's, I mean, there's a lot of sales training, but, you know, kind of generic, or a lot of technical training, but not the combination. So I love it. I just love it, you know, bring in someone and start modeling you, you know, the way that I like, but the rest is not so interesting. And why do you take it then? I mean, because I, I felt the same way, because part of it for me, at least, and a lot of people is like, you see it as the next progression or you don't want to work for that other person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I completely follow. I completely follow. I mean, I don't know. I, I just also see these these jobs. I mean, I don't call it what, you know, what I do is not a job, it's a mission. You know, I see these companies as a mission. Actually, when I evaluate where is the next step, because I tend to change every three years, is, is you know, what, do you have a vision of what you want to achieve and how do I fit there? So sometimes it might make sense, you know, like it did back in the days in Nordsal, you know, to, to build up a, a team from scratch or next I went to Juniper. And I, I built up a, a, a team of seven out of nothing, you know, from scratch. And, you know, we grew sales from 1 million to 14 million just in two years. But it made sense, you know, to, to manage that stuff. But sometimes it's just because you have to grow, you know, splits and grow. And, yeah. okay, somebody else do it, you know. <laughs> well, that's it. You either have a tiny little territory or you become a manager. That's right. That's right. Or, or you go into one of these overlays positions, you know. So you can have the three things. You cannot have all the products, all the customers, and all the partners. No. So you have to choose, you know, two out of the three. So either you become an RSD or DSM, or an AM or a PSA, a PAM or a CAM, you know, channel commands or something. Unless you just do what I do now, which is, you know, you manage something small on my own in a smaller company. No. Still, I manage a team because, you know, I, I like to build, you know, virtual teams. I, I'm very good in, in their excels, you know, with partners and distributors and stuff. But, and uh, it sounds like, have you developed your own process as far as like getting that technical sale and the business sale? Well, apparently, yes, because, you know, I've, I've been successful, I can say, in terms of numbers in all the companies that I've been, you know, in all these missions that I had. And, and more or less, I always follow the same path, you know. I, I mean, it's... I mean, I can tell you in one minute, it's, to me, it's so basic and stupid, you know, it's so simple. It, it, but, it, but the execution is the tricky thing here. Right. So I think the, the whole process starts by understanding what do you sell, which is, it seems like a very obvious question, but it's not. <laughs> so what do you sell? Do you know, what problems does it fix? And, and who is it relevant for? Not only the type of companies, but what person inside of that company. Yeah. So once you understand that, you know, who do you have to go and talk with and what to say? Then I, I like to develop my own sales material. So this is something that, you know, PLMs are crazy about me because, you know, for instance, in the company that I'm now, I have developed my own website, you know, with my own use cases, book and stuff. You know, I, I've done it in the last two, three companies. And and also, I I, am, I also love, I mean, I have, I have a telecom degree but I'm not a super expert, but I've got a lot of friends who are super experts and I am very good actor. So I'm, people might believe that I'm super good technically, but it's not the thing is that I explain myself very well. So I, I also like to stupidify if, it, if these were exist the technology. So to make it very simple, this is why I, I always tend that to, um, to sell managed services because it's the way to, to scale a sale. So anyway, so once I know what I have in my hands, I start testing it. I mean, it's so obvious. I just go to friends that I have, you know, people who buy and stuff, and I start, you know, reshaping, reshaping, reshaping until that I have something that it's, okay, now we're going to third phase, which is production modes. So I am working with the best pre-sales guy that you could ever imagine. 
and I also have the best telemarketing guy you could ever imagine. So we just go like a machine gun. And it, it's like a process. The telemarketing guy goes and close the visit. I just go to the pitch and create opportunity, two, three, four meetings, whatever. And then Ferran, my, my pre-sales guy, will jump in and just really, you know, make these guys fall in love with us. Yeah. And one <clears throat> and a half years. It takes one and a half years. How about as far as like getting the money through? Because I, that I can see getting the technical sale where they want to buy your stuff. It solves that problem, but it requires them to change. And this is an art. Well, actually, this is the art, and this is you know what you have to master. I mean, if if you put it at the company that I'm working for now, we are selling a very weird, bizarre technology that nobody knows. It's called packet brokers. Who the hell knows what is a packet broker? Basically, if you don't know who I am and what I do. It means that you are, I'm not in your budget. So the sales cycle it's is going to be budget, right? very long by definition. Yeah. The, on the other hand, because we build up this, um, I mean, this is what I love most of my job, you know. It's, it's I'm going to solve your problems. You know, you're going to live better because of my technology. You know, we don't face much competition because we, we build up projects that are absolutely tailored. But obviously, then there starts the big fight, which is fight, you know, funding the, um, the budget. And, and again, as I'm alone in my territory, I cover all verticals. You know, now we can talk about public administration. I mean, if, if cell cycles are long with public administration, are super long. Yeah. But, you know, but it's, it's good fun. I mean, it's part of the job. I mean, the, only, the other problem that I'm facing now is that companies don't have the patience, you know, to, to wait for this sales cycle to start. Cool. But the good thing is that you, if, if you're lucky and you close a few projects that, you know, you survive a few quarters, then the, the, the rolling stone, you know, model yeah. Yeah. you know delivers the flywheel yeah that's right and how long does it typically take and how do you manage that expectation because so i've had to face that because oh yeah as i told you you know it, it my model it's it's 18 months you know because yeah. i need like like six months to to develop and stuff and then just put the machine gun and then wait for the results so the way you handle that of course you go to for the long hanged food first you know it's these, these customers or, or even friends that you've got, you know, that they know that they trust you because, you know, you've been working for so many years. I never lied to anyone. And, and this is why you still, you know, are trusted. And um, my, some people might laugh about this. <laughs> um, and, and the point is, is just surviving some quarters or maybe you inherit something from the guy before, or if you start from scratch, you know, you have to survive. But then the thing starts rolling, you know, and, and I normally kill my numbers, you know, and, you know, you make the, the, the big money, but then start this, this split and growth thing, you know, they want to give you more people, split the territory, put higher quarters, and it makes no sense, you know, and, and okay, uh, maybe, but maybe for a new mission. Do the, the hiring managers understand this? Or do you have... What do answer? you think, Brian? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, because that becomes the real tragedy in that the first person they hire after nine months, concern goes up. After a year, concern really goes up. I'll tell you, I'll tell you my experience in, in previous employers, and I won't say the names, you know, people, people in this company know what, what I'm talking about. You know, there's some people, you know, who believe, let's, let's imagine that, you know, uh, a sales rep is going to have a quota of, well, you know, that it's now it's new business and, and recurring businesses are part, you know, all these, these great things. Anyway, let's imagine that, you know, you're supposed to be doing 2 million. So for some funny reason, some people believe that if you put 10 people, you will have 20 million. No, it doesn't work like that, <laughs> you know? And, um, and even when, when, when you hire somebody new, and uh, this guy is gonna need some time to build up something new. Or if you get some territory or comes out of somebody else, that guy will have, you know, will need some time to recover. So the problem is that by the time, you know, these guys are going to build up something, the company lose patience and we get rid of them. <laughs> and well, by the well, way, the problem. Was <laughs> well, that's it. We used to call it, you know, the, the pioneers die. What you want to be is the second person that comes in because the pioneer right. built some pipeline, didn't close much of anything. And now you come in as the next person, the pilgrim or whoever, yeah. whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So now there's something to build off of. It's just so scary to be that first person in because you're getting no support. They doubt you. Yeah. They, they don't think you're working hard. And you're not but, making money. That's right. 
That's right. Yeah, I mean, at the end, if you're in sales, it's because you like money. I mean, let's let, make no mistake. The, the thing is that um, maybe it's because I've been so many years here. You know, we are, I think we are like snails. You know, we leave traces throughout, you know, <laughs> the cycles. It's true. Yeah. And, uh, and you build up a reputation, you know, for the good and for the bad. So somehow I've got a reputation that I, I fix problems or I start up things or, I mean, I am a pure, I love hunting. I mean, let's be honest, you know, hunters are farmers are different spices. You know, if you go to my DNA, it's completely different. And actually farming, I find it that boring. So it's, it starting is something that motivates, me, you know, it's starting something, you know, so, um, so I'm not scared. And, uh, but of course, you know, there is this challenge that you're talking about. Yeah. But, uh, and what part excites you the most? Is it the, is it the hunting that, you know, starting from scratch? Absolutely. The big deal. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and the scaling, you know, when, when you have something, you know, and you can go to a partner and say, Hey, you like this, you know, you got to help me there, you know, because, you know, I've got this crystal ball that I know you, that you've got all these accounts or whatever. And when you see the things start scaling, I, I love, I love that feeling. I love that yeah. feeling, you know? I mean, I, it's it's something that I've repeated, you know, in, in all the companies that I was working for, you know, I don't know, in, in Juniper, we started creating these, these rolling model, you know, for selling routers as a managed service. And, and we literally broke the um, the factory. I mean, there were no more SRXs to, to deliver yeah. at some stage. I, I love that stuff, you know, because it proves that, you know, that that machine was well planned and well executed. You know? and, and you haven't either been enticed to or wanted to go into a difference like the software industry versus the the network hardware well it's interesting because um i've i've started back in the days in in alcatel in voice yeah. then i moved into nortel and i was doing voice data centers but then i just moved into data then after data, I realized if, if the Chinese are developing the technology, that it's, move, it's time to move to somebody, something else. It's just commodity and move into security. Then in F5, I was more into the software stuff. So I've been doing a little bit of everything. So it's kind of the same to me, you know, yeah. to be honest. I like I like the, the, the niche technologies now. I find it more interesting, you know, that these massive things. And it sounds like, have you brought like your telesales person and your pre-sales person from the past? Yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. a pre-built pod. I've, I mean, with with my pre-sales now, we've been working together in, in, in different companies. I mean, we're just like a cluster now. And uh, th there's a very funny story about this digital marketing guy that I'm working with now. I mean, um, you know, I used to have another lady, and, and, and well, it just was not working as as I expected, and she left anyway. And uh, at some stage, I thought, you know, do I really need someone who comes from IT? And I just thought, well, not really. You know, I just need someone that it's passionate, he would never take a no, you know, these values that you expect from somebody like this. And I have this friend who told me, are hey, you looking for this friend of mine who is an ambulance driver? I said, are you kidding me? I mean, and he's the, the most successful guy. I mean, today is what, 25th of February. He Today he closed the 50th meeting of the year. 50 in a region like mine, you know, that is not so big. It, this guy is amazing. This guy is amazing. But yeah, I mean, I've got kind of an eye to, to find these these values in the people, you know, it's this, this energy, this passion. I mean, um, I mean, you cannot substitute the, you know, the attitudes of somebody. You know? Well, and that's it. When you have a pre-built team going to another company, it, it saves so much time. Like I had the same pre-sales person for 15 years. Yeah. At, you know, six different companies. <laughs> you know, our careers, a different industry, but similar pattern. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, actually, my story with Ferron is that we were working together, then we split, and then we worked again. Yeah. So, it, but, but it's 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 very easy. It's like hey, you know, you look at the eyes, new mission. You like this one? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, okay, let's go. Well, you know, even um, it works also if you find a great manager, somebody who, of course who wants doesn't mind doing the admin, is a cl a climber, wants a great rep and a pre-built team. You know, so they go out and find the next Nortel Absolutely. Or F5. Well, I, I didn't mention that, but, but anyway, I'm here because of Ricardo, you know, he's the one who introduced me into this, into this world and he teach me everything uh, that I know. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 you know, you understand each other. For instance, it's somebody who understands, okay, this guy is a, is a wild beast. Leave it, just run whenever. I will do some firewalling of all this, you know, crap and, <laughs> and reporting and stuff, you know. Anyway, bring the numbers. Okay, because I know how to bring the numbers, you know. 
So um, right, just pretty much anyone can do the the bookkeeping. Yeah. Right, getting the numbers is the, the the magic. I believe so. I believe so. And uh, and, and especially you know when, when you have to start something from scratch, yes. you know. Or the other company that I was working for, it was five, six years, you know, numbers were dropping. And how do you turn around this situation, you know, in a team that is not your team? And I, but, but, I mean, I would say it's not easy, but this is the easy part for me. But then playing the politics and, you know, and when you, well, I, I, I always talk about the SPT. It was so funny when I heard your video talking about the SPT, you know, the sales prevention team. When the sales <laughs> prevention team is taking more time than sales on your agenda, you know, it's, it's the time to really think, you know, maybe you should be doing something different. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have any passion on that insight selling the, you know, the, the sales prevention team, the product team. The... But, but I, I, I acknowledge that sometimes it's a problem, you know, because if, if you want to defend your team and keep on doing stuff, sometimes you have to play the politics. Yeah. You know, but, uh... And have you been able to like quantify what great selling is versus the artistic, intuitive side of it when you talk to another? Wow. Sales Wow. Well, I mean, I told you before in the introduction that I that I consider myself many times an actor, you know, that it's, I've got like my script, which is, you know, my pre-sales Ferran, I, I, we built together. And, and I think there is a lot of, 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 of you know, of artistic point there of, of you know, explaining, you know, um, yes. acting, Connect. actually acting. I, I would say that, but anyway, I believe, I believe in this methodology and, you know, keeping track and being instructor and stuff. So I would say that it's a kind of 50-50. Yeah. Or if I have to balance a little bit more, it, it would be because of this imagination. I, you know, I've got very good imagination on how to translate into, into the language of the customers, you know, listening and, and tuning this stuff. I, I would go 60-40 on the artistic part, you know, of, yeah. because of the imagination mainly. And how about the mountain climbing? Does that become like a metaphor for the career? Because- Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a I started challenge. climbing quite late. It is, you know, this is where I have my big ideas. You know, it's been in these big spaces and uh, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I don't miss an opportunity. You know, when I joined I-5, you know, headquarters in, in, in Seattle, okay, Mount Rainier. So I just climbed solo up there. To me, it's like great, you know, it's it's when I have these big ideas. And of course, you know, it's, it's the super challenge. Somehow you're in your own, but, you know, if you go with others, you know, you're tied with a rope. If you, one falls, you know, the other one just dies on... There's a lot of polarisms with um, with uh, with sales, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, if it requires that focus. It's typically not out of reach, but a challenge. Yeah. And when you get there at that top, there's that accomplishment. And I'll, I'll tell you something. This is personal. I hope that my manager is not going to be listening. No one's but... listening. <laughs> but you always try to go a little bit further. So yeah. a little bit further. So 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 far I've been to up to a six thousand. So I've got in my head the seven thousand now, and and I know which one is going to be. It's 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 in Kyrgyzstan, so it's it's there, it's there, and it's this goal that you have. That I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush, but it's something that I will do at some stage. And you know, how do you train for that? Is it running? Is it walking? Is it? It's everything and climbing. It's that's that's the other good thing. You know, you put a you put a goal that it's well you know ahead of you, so that you've got you know you have to concentrate and. Yeah, there's so many problems with 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 sales, you know, with your profession actually. So so yeah, I mean, it's it's not that I'm obsessed, but I know that I will do in the next couple of years. I have to go to Kyrgyzstan and go up to Lenin Peak. Why? Right, right because it, it, it's not like a game, which is kind of like transaction. You play it, you win or lose, you move on. A mountain climb, it's an event, a process. It is. It is. It is. It and and it's constantly. extremely mental. It's extremely mental. Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, by definition, I never take a no as an answer. You know, it's it's my it's my mentality. I mean, one of the things that I always say is that you know, I mean, there is a solution for everything. Well, apart from death, but even for death, you can <laughs> bring creation. So what? So far, you know? you're winning against that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's um, yeah. I mean, mountain is, is where I, it's literally where I, I mean, from time to time, I just need to escape. And this is where I've got the ideas because somehow everything makes sense and puts together. Yeah. Well, it's a natural flow state event because it requires uh, hyper concentration in the moment. You can't daydream 
when your your life is nope. in balance. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, you do a physical exercise in a big, wide open space, so it's it's good. There you go. When reps come to you for advice, what do you typically see them doing wrong? Well, um, I'm proud to tell you that everybody that is worked for me, apart from a couple of guys that maybe I had to fire, you know, <laughs> I, keep, I keep contact with all of them and, and they look for advice, just like I, I look for advice with, with other people, you know. So um, I think um, not thinking in long term yeah. would be the most important thing. Um, not understanding that money, it's a consequence, not a goal. Yeah. That's super important. And I mean, it, even yesterday, you know, somebody that has worked with me was asking me for advice on whether she, well, she, oh, she was a lady, she would take one position or not. And, and you know, I said, okay, let's do a balance. And, and at, at some stage, you know, I said, what are you talking about money? You know, at, after the second pay slip, you forget about it. And you think that you're underpaid. So, you know, it's, you know, it's it do something that, you know, you're passionate about. And that it makes sense on your long-term career. So one of the things that I always challenge people is explain me your CV, but you know, don't tell me about you know the companies that have, you've been working for. I mean, what's the, the line? What's the, the dotted line? You know, what what can I build out of this thing? You know, what do you like? What is your passion? So yeah. this I would think that you know this lack of patience. But, you well, know, well that's it. Because, because yeah, because day to day and quarter to quarter, we're hyper focused on the now. You know, what what's our next deal? We're not thinking yeah. about three quarters away. But but tell me something, you know, after you have been so for so many, many, many years, so many, many quarters, some quarters being good, some others being bad. Are you scared anymore of failing? I'm not, you know. Uh, if, no. I mean, I've, I've never failed in the big picture. I mean, some quarters might, but I'm ready to fail, you know. Maybe one day I, I failed to, to, to find a way how to explain this technology. Because I just couldn't, or it was not possible. So what? Well, well, that's it. Because like when you go to a new company, if you know you've got that twelve to eighteen month slog, where, where if you feel like you're making progress, but you're not getting the feedback, and you're not getting the commission check, you're not getting the deal, you're not getting the. But you know what, Brian? I think this is why it's so important, and maybe this is some, something you develop as, as you become more veteran. When, when I want to join a company, I want to know about the company. Who owns it? Yeah. What, what's their vision? What's their goal? I mean, are they just going to, you know, quickly well, grow just to sell it to somebody and they're going to you know, screw you up and, and change the commission plan every once in a while just to, to, to you know, improve the, the bottom line and stuff. So you, you develop that instinct, you know, this is the place for me or not. You know, is it, is it aligned with, with, what I'm, with my values, with what I want to do? I mean, it's, it's difficult to define because it's, it's in your guts, you know, you got to feel it, yeah. but you develop it. Hey, I really appreciate your time today. Where can people go to connect and follow you? Well, of course, in LinkedIn and, and all my connection data is there. And, you know, happy to, to you know, contact with, with anyone who's interested in developing anything that I spoke about.